Oh my goodness, Bob, we're going on tour. This is so exciting. Listen, y'all, tickets are available right this very second. Help us yes, sell this tour out. Help us go bananas. So the next time y'all see us, we'll be at Madison Square Garden, Haney. <laughs> Hello, let me tell you something. This is the biggest tour Bob and I are doing. It's going to be great. Lights, camera, action, dancers, podcast, everything you want in a Bob and Monet show, you're going to get. So make sure you get your tickets at bobandmonet.com. Oh, and there's also going to be brand new music. Ooh. All right, bobandmonet.com. Macaroni Give me one shot, so, one shot, I don't one song. shot of adrenaline. No. Adrenaline. Honestly, no. it's one of RuPaul's, one of my favorites. Probably top 10. Top 10. Top 10. Adrenaline. 10? Also, after, after, yeah, for sure. What's your, what's your, what's your top 10 RuPaul songs? Name them from top from 10 I, to, to I, one. I don't have a list. I do not have a list of my top just all, 10 Just off the top songs. of your head, just say your, uh, the ones you can think of right now, 10 RuPaul songs that you really like. You, there, you, you know at I, least I would like RuPaul to songs. give the list some. I would like to give the list some consideration, but I, I do like uh, Just What They Want. I like Call Me Mother. I like Just, just What Walk. They Want? I like, how, does that, um, well, how does that go? They want to see you let it out. They want to see you go oh. off. You know, I am in oh. business. Come, let's give them just what they want. Um, I really like... Um, I came from out of space. A planet called 808. In the galaxy, you funk with a robot's grab a taste. It's called I Bring the Beat. Oh, uh, the one that they say that he mopped from Azalea Banks, allegedly. No, you're thinking Call Me Mother. Call Me Mother is Call based me, off of they say it's from Azalea the Big Beat. It's called The Big Beat. Yeah, yeah, Big Beat. Right, right. No, it's called The Big Big Beat. And the other one's called I Bring the Beat, which are two completely separate songs. Got it. Okay, so you need about five. You have five more? I'm, I'm money. I, I don't. I no. I'm not. I'm not playing your. You tell me your top ten, bitch. This is your game. Name your top ten. Okay. Um. Uh, Call me mother is up there. Um. Sister that walk is definitely up there. Blame it on the edit is, is up there. Catwalk is up there. Um. Um. Fucking. She going. Um. She going back to the work. <laughs> She going back to the workroom. Rethink her life. Cover my girls. Vodka on alcohol. <laughs> Vodka and cranberry. Thank you. That song, Those the first two lines of that song correct me up because that is so real. Bitch, when you're in the bottom, you are feeling bald-headed, disgusted, and confused. She going back to the workroom. Rethink her life. I'm like, RuPaul nailed it with those lyrics. He fucking nailed it. Uh, That's five. We need that. five more. Um, I, I this, this is a feature, but I, I I'm gonna put it in there because I love RuPaul's verse in it, and I love RuPaul in the video. Low with Todrick Hall, um, the fucking song with Miley Cyrus is uh, uh, Catitude. RuPaul's verse, it's called Catitude. Y'all, if, yeah. If y'all, I know the name of it, Catitude. If y'all not heard it, y'all need to look, go to your Spotify, your Apple Music right now. RuPaul's verse is so nasty. Rupa was getting real dirty with the lyrics, girl. I was like, oh my god. And of course, Super So is it, is it in your fight? This in your top fives? It definitely is. I, I love when three RuPaul songs. Is, I love when RuPaul is nasty and dirty and like cunty. It, it really gets my fucking juices going. Uh, and of course, the, the classic, Jeal- Jealous of My Boogie. Um, champion, champion was the that, that used to be the crowning song that they were playing on Drag Race when like Raja won, and when um um I I believe Tyra sent a uh, James one. They play that song, and um the last one to run on my ten I would say is oh <laughs> Super Queen of course, yes. Super Queen is a great song. Do you want to um, read the lyrics to, um, to shine her own? Do you want to read the lyrics oh, to your, is, your, one of your favorite songs? Oh, this is lyrics. This is RuPaul's lyrics to Catitude. Ride, shine, clock said pussy time. Bust my pussy nut while I'm figuring your butt. Do I suck dick? You ain't seen shit. Throw a seat no, watch you slide down my throat. Yeah, my pussy fine. I pop it cause it's mine. I don't give a fuck if they call me a slut. What I do with the dick and let me press it. Put tears in his eyes when I milk a brother dry. I mean, imagine RuPaul in the fucking booth with his with his headphones on. Like that is, I fucking love RuPaul. I fucking love that old black man. I fucking love RuPaul. What a fucking icon, man. (laughs) 
<laughs> what do you think of episode me, but... two of uh are you excited to be reviewing uh season eight of rupaul's uh drag race yeah, so if anyone is just, in case you missed the first week and you're just, you're catching up to watchery, we're reviewing season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race, and this one is episode two of um of season eight. And I remember episode two because I like, really like the mini challenge in this one for whatever for whatever reason. Um, I thought it was a fun one. It was really cute. The cha cha bitch dance thing was cute. A lot of girls really did really good stuff, and I think we should jump right on in, Roberta. So, episode two is a uh, bitch perfect. This is, um, by the way, as a reminder, season eight, I think, is on record as the shortest season of RuPaul's Drag Race. America. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not counting every season. I don't know how long all the other seasons are. I, I don't know. There, there. Do you well, know? Uh, there's uh, UK versus the world is only six episodes. Well, I'm not, talk- I'm not counting any all stars. I'm just counting Drag Race. Um. But mm. I don't know how I don't know about um, you know international seasons. Um, so you don't think the international means, seasons are valid? That's exactly what I said verbatim. And I also and, and I'm not Remember. saying that you heard um, it here. Anyway, Espania, so, you heard it here. Paris, you heard it here. UK, Bob thinks that y'all seasons are not valid. And they're shit. Also down under. Also Canada. Also UK. Oh my also God. Philippines. Aussie, yes. Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi! Drag this fucking black bald bitch. I, this is, anyway, I don't like this. I don't like this, Bob. I don't like the. I don't like you doing this. See, let's see. I'm sorry, y'all. That, oh my god, I feel really bad about it. Actually, you guys, you guys, you guys have to. You have to. You have to get used to it. Uh, to to quote Monet, I mean Monet is uh, still in her uh, battle with Dracula when she says it's not even real Drag Race. So we're still in the midst of that. Yeah. So I figured I'd get myself some controversy going too. Um, D- only for what's her name? Um, um, as as uh, 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 um, her name is Zavaleta. Z- Zabaletta, only her, just her, just her drag race. All three of us have announced that Zabaletta. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, this season, uh, I, it's really interesting because you know, of course, me and Layla work together all the time. Now I see Layla uh, every episode of We're Here, and and for certain other gigs that I do as well, like we we did Legendary together, um, stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of like this. So I mean, sometimes I do my own makeup, sometimes Layla does my makeup, and it's so weird to see young Layla. Because she's so intimidated in the workroom. Like, we, when we come back in, Layla just sent home Nisha Lopez. And she is just like, Layla's like a little bit of a timid person in general. She's very short. She's like five, 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 six. And she's like a tiny, tiny little thing. But she is particularly just intimidated by, I think, by all these big personalities, these literally big people around her. And it's just so interesting to see this in, in hindsight. You know what I mean? But I also yeah. remember that Layla, but Layla did, Layla did not, these, Layla had some very strong thoughts in the uh, little Confessionals, room. Confessionals, yeah. That, that she was not sharing in the room, girl. I was like, Layla is reading the girls, honey. Well, I mean, and in the fallout, Naomi leaves. She goes, she literally says, she just throws it out. She's like, were you gagged? I wasn't in the bottom two. And I love this, Naomi, because she's being self-aware. Because let's be honest, Naomi... <laughs> I love Naomi literally like she's one of my favorite human beings in life. Naomi, by the hairs on her fucking, on the tips of her human hair wig that she wasn't wearing this, that she escaping the bottom. Like, Naomi wore a dress that she brought from home, and the boat was really bad. So I think she really escaped death that episode. Yeah, but she said, I don't know why you all gagging. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. She's, also, I want you all to know if you're watching on iTunes or maybe even Amazon, I'm not sure. At the three minute and fifty five second mark is the first time you hear on TV me say, "Walk into the room first, first. You're very welcome. Iconic moments in queer history, darling. <laughs> what? I like a more it refund. Mm. Um, and also. Uh, we, um, if you look at, um, uh, also, so this is where we, we, A.B. Soto did a song called Cha-Cha Bitch, and then RuPaul was featured on the remix, um, which is, a re- I think it's on the, the album, like, Champion, or, I can't remember which album it's on. It's the yellow one, it's, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the yellow one, it's, it's, it's the same one that has, um, Category Is on it, that album, I don't know what album it is. But I remember, um, because I think, um, I think A.B. Soto's from New York City, or at least I feel is like I really? know I feel like I know A.B. Soto from New York City. Maybe I just saw him in New York City once or twice. And he's Aurora not actually Borealis from there. It's from Soto. the album. 
It's from the album Book Queen. Butch Queen, I mean. Book, Book Queen. Queen. Butch it's from Queen. the album Butch Queen. Butch Queen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so we, we are Did giving you... uh is this is this is a slightly problematic <laughs> mini challenge. Uh where we give homage to uh to all Latin American countries. Well, I mean, I uh, thought you to throw some uh generalizations about the entire country of Spain. She's like, Well, Spanish women don't shave their legs, do they? Oh yeah, that is. She did to that. But I, mean, I don't think y'all don't dancing to it is problematic. In Spain. I would say Thorgy was in no, a little she was in like a little a little uh Frida Kahlo moment with her with her with, with the unibrow and the flowers in her hair. Yeah. Well she said at one point Spanish women don't shave their legs, referring to Spain, but then she did Frida Kahlo, who is Which Mexican. Is Mexican. So Yeah, it was wild. It was a whole that was a it was a, it was all Latin American countries all rolled up into one ball of cha cha bitch. Which is where we uh, immediately found out that. Um, also, I want to find that. <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this, my quick drag. You had on I'm your jeans and clothes. your shirt that you had on. No, why? Why? I'm wearing the same clothes I had on when I walked into the room. <laughs> why didn't you change? Why? Why did you just keep on your clothes? Because I know that quick drag doesn't matter. Like it's not judged anything. I'm not wasting anything for quick drag. I'm just not Sorry. doing it. Like the what's the. The point of quick drag is just to look silly. So why would I pull out a new costume to look good for quick drag? Why would I do that? Not look good, but just participate. Everyone else participated. Bob, the egg and Bob, bring, bring up the I did, rear. I did, I did. I did. I did my makeup, and I and I actually like my look. I had my little uh, one button at the top, my bandana, my earrings. I actually kind of was kind of into my look actually, and I had my pumps mm. on. But I was about to fucking grab no, grab no drag to do some quick drag girl. <laughs> um, I think the standout to me and the I went, challenge and I, went, were, and, I, and I went over to the out of the closet uh, to go look at the clothes but I just didn't like any of them none of them, were, none of them made sense for what we were trying to do so I was just like because the, the out of the the out of the closet stuff that we had was actually for the challenge it wasn't actually for the mini challenge they just bought it in so none of it made sense all of that stuff on that rack made sense for our mini challenge and mm-hmm. I was like this doesn't make sense I was going to do my own thing um, I think the standouts in, in in this in this mini challenge for me were Chi Chi Devane. I did like um, mm-hmm. Cynthia's cuckoo moment. I, her shaking her big juicy butt, and I, in my opinion, fucking um, who did I write? I just, shit, I, I didn't write someone. Someone was stood out to me a lot. Who was it? Oh, Thorgy. Thorgy well, should have won the been- challenge. Thorgy, oh. Thorgy fucking turned. Thorgy was so funny. She did like that chicken thing, and then she hit. She kicked her leg right on the beat of that. Uh, I was like, Thorgy was the best. She should have won. I wonder if one another. She had, the kick actually wasn't on beat. They edited the kick to be on beat. Okay. You don't remember, please. Um, <laughs> they actually edited the kick to be on beat. She was off beat the whole time. No, uh, Thorgy's was really good. I thought that uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, I thought Acid Betty did a good job too. Acid Betty, Chi Chi, um, Cynthia Lee Fontaine all did a great job. Um, and, and I thought, yeah, it was it was actually a pretty fun um, little challenge. And then this is when we. Uh, when we really got a chance to see Kim Chi in all of her glory, in all of her Kim Chi stumbling glory, I was like, this is. W- w-. And also, not Naomi with that crunchy little dip. It was crunchy, but it was so Naomi. Na- Naomi loves doing florography. Na- Naomi, if there is a dance, when Naomi's dancing, and, and even in like structure choreo, Naomi will find the floor and do floriography if it's the last thing she does. She loves rubbing her legs and her limbs all over the floor. Some people are just comfortable on their backs. Um, and then we split up into the group. So we find out that Cynthia Lee Fontaine and Chi Chi are the captain. Well, y'all shoot based they, on their y'all performances. Pick groups. You know, well, yeah, well, 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 I'm, I'm getting at that. Um, mm-hmm. Cynthia Lee Fontaine and Chi Chi Devane were captains based off their performances in, in the Cha Cha Bitch Challenge, and they are assigned to pick us. Now, I got picked first. You gagging? Well, were you first or second? You are first for that I group. I was first. I did, I, I, did, oh. I did not stutter. Bitch, I was first. I did not... I did not st- 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 Bitch, I was picked. Why do you try to take my flowers from me? A- anytime I have anything, you try to take my tiniest little bit of flowers from me. I was picked first. Yeah, take your flowers for you. I literally <laughs> fucking did a, 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 a runway about you, but I'm taking your flowers. Go off. Yeah, you're welcome. So I, I, I was picked first. Wait, are you sure when you pick second? No, bitch, I was picked first. Mm-hmm. Um, And then uh, the last two girls standing were Naomi Smalls and Kimberly Cheese. 
Do you? How did? Where, where did you fall in the picking of groups and stuff on your times on Drag Race? Uh we only did it one time in season ten, and I was early on, like either like the one of the, like the first three. On what about groups on All Stars? How did y'all split a groups on All Stars? How did y'all split we groups when y'all did? Um, everybody said, everybody said, everybody say love. Everybody, oh, yeah, we did. Everybody. Uh, um, Monique picked me like I was the first one she picked on her team. First or second? Okay. Probably um, second, because I think I think for, who was the other? Who are the, whoever the other group was, they picked them, and then it was uh, I was the first one. Naomi, um, Monique, Mo Hart. Sorry, Mo Hart. But also at the end, Kim says uh, that's okay. I wouldn't want me either. But I feel like Kim said that sarcastically, and they just edited oh, it to 100%. sound. And they just edited it to sound sad. And I was like, this shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Kim right now. I'm gonna call Kimberly right now and ask her if she remembers. Like, Kim, girl, did you say don't remember that shit, girl? I, I'm gonna put it right the now. The thing is, when we did, when we did our confessionals, we didn't do them every day on the fly. We had to do like three episodes at once. We had to write mm-hmm. in journals to um to remember stuff because we only did our hey, interviews on hey, on Kim, Sundays. Hey Kim, you're currently on speakerphone. I'm calling on the podcast. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So Bob and I, for our watchery, we're um, re- we're watching season eight again, and we're up to episode two. When you were picked last for the for the bitch perfect thing, and you said and you said in, in your confessional, that's right. I I wouldn't want me either. Were you were you being Kim and being silly, or were you being serious? Okay, so um, <laughs> that that moment in particular, uh-huh. I did three takes. Um, at first, I was like, "It's okay, I would have picked me either," and the producer was like. Uh, can you say it in a different way? I was like, I wouldn't pick me either. It's like, oh, how about a sad one? I wouldn't pick me either. <laughs> and get this one they aired. <laughs> so, like, the only moment of your having, you know, like when we were recording confessionals. Yeah. And then like the one out there, like, oh, I wouldn't pick me either. <laughs> Work okay. We we're 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 gonna get back to the pod. We we were, Bob and I were so curious because we were like we we know you. We we're like it was probably being a hundred percent silly and it made it serious. I love you very much. I'll talk to you soon. I talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> well, there you have it. Oh my god, um, the access yeah, honey. Like, this is it, called this is called access honey. You kids can never. We have access honey. Oh my god, drag bussy queen, drag bussy queen. <laughs> um, it, it it sounds like yeah, it sounds like Kim was just being like. I mean, I get it. I wouldn't pick me there like, but you're kind of sad, right, bitch? Um, <laughs> but anyway, so Kim gets picked last, which is funny because as they call Kim, she starts like doing this like fake cry as she heads over. So we're split mm-hmm. up into these groups. And y'all, I forgot. I have not seen this season so long. I do not envy Chi-Chi for what she had to put up with with Acid with- Betty and Thorgy in I know. this group. Acid Betty and Thorgy were... Mo- especially as acid Betty came in i wrote hot. this yeah i said i said i said acid is so fucking mean god damn acid is just so she is just a acid is that is that is that little red thing from um from fucking inside out just constantly just exploding on everyone every chance she gets she's so mean yeah it was why she was like I, like they just sit down and she's like well we need to start rehearsing i'm not gonna be in the bottom because of you boo and I was like, we just <laughs> sat down. Betty, why are you coming yeah, in? Is, and, I mean, I was like, is, is she, and then at one point, she's like, it's okay. And she's like, well, we, we need to get, but we need to get beyond okay. And I would have been <laughs> like, I, I do not know how Chi Chi kept her cool as well as she did because it, this is too much. And it persists throughout the entire, like from from this moment on until they perform, like it is this like nonstop with her. And I will say this for Betty's credit, I've worked with Betty a bunch of times in real life. Betty is very helpful, very sweet, and a very nice lady, but she is also very mean too. She she balances. I mean, she does err on more the on like the mean side in real life too. But overall, Betty is a nice lady, but shit is extra. She's just extra mean on this show. I'm gonna tell you something right now. I I'm gonna tell you, and I and I I I, I applaud Monet for doing so. I will not be qualifying any of my critiques on this show. When Monet's be like, I love Naomi, she's so sweet, but then I will not be qualifying any of my critiques of any I'm of my just giving observations them real. on the show. I'm just talking about I'm talking about me and myself. I'm not qualifying any of the things that I say. You can qualify everything, feel free. I'm talking about what I see in this moment. Acid Betty is 
straight up bullying Chi Chi the Vain. I'm like, this is wow. And then Chi Chi is between Aspen and Thorgy, and Thorgy's like, well, I'm gonna do it anyway. Well, you don't even get comedy. And I was like, which this right? Is, and then she has. I love that Thorgy then, was then, right because. But but do you do you not think Thorgy was right? Because it, at the end of the day, which we know in Drag Race, you have every with, with anything you do, it has to be funny. And Thorgy's like, I'm a comedy queen. I'm funny. And she she did, did not get humor. And what she did was great. I would have been like, bitch, I'm doing it anyway. I think Thorgy did the right I fucking thing. One hundred percent. I don't think I don't think what you said was necessarily correct. I don't think everything has to be humor because I don't think Chi Chi did anything funny and she won the challenge. I don't think Chi Chi did anything funny this whole episode. But she still won the talent, so I don't I don't necessarily agree that with everything on Drag Race that has to be funny. But the whole I mean, because I I think because overall, because I mean we'll we'll get there later, where their group was better with choreo and, and comedy and all that stuff. They they were the better mm-hmm. group. But I think that the comedy aspect con- contributed to the fact that their group won because it had it was nicely well run. It was good, it was good, it was good choreo, the lip sync was tight, and it was funny. I think I mean drag Rue said Rue and Michelle say literally every season, make me laugh. Be be stu- we we like stupid. We like well, things it, that are it, funny it, and stupid. It depends on the cha- it depends on the cha- Challenge, yeah. Actually, I mean, in my opinion, I actually think that our group was funnier, but I think their group was better. Like all over, like across the board, I think their group was better. But I actually do think that that the 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 lady bitches were actually funnier than the than the shady bitches. Um, but anyway, long story short, yeah, I I I I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not talking about whether or not Thorgy is wrong or right. I'm just talking about what Thorgy did, which was she was just like, and but also it was like it was she wouldn't let it go. She wouldn't just like just take hear what Chi-Chi's saying and then go do her own thing she has like every time she mentions that RuPaul comes over and she goes well she told me not to but I'm doing it anyway and then she goes down to the Jamal Sims she goes yeah I wanted to do this yeah that's right and I was like okay you don't have to just do your thing just do your thing they were giving this girl a hard time I mean, I was gagged, especially especially thinking of like past seasons, like season five and like and like like because you guys are season eight, so those seasons were still like new. You know what I mean? Those still like were still really current people's minds, and I think that Thorgy's playing the game like how she saw it being played in season four and season five, being really gung ho and being very 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 vocal about what you're doing. To be fair, I'm to right now. I've worked with Thorgy for years. That is how she is. That bitch was not doing TV. I've did Queen with Thorgy. I have done countless oh, shows with Thorgy. I have done I have I have done Christmas tours. That I do not think Thorgy was was had any TV in mind. That is just how Thorgy is. Full T. Um I, and, and, and I also think it's gonna be true um, at one point. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, I'm not okay. Why are you so combative today? Jesus Christ. And then uh, there's was, there's was another part where um where um where uh betty starts reading the whole group being like have y'all never been in a proper show before like why, why i don't know have y- y'all, i was like i was like what is going on and again i, I work with betty i do not think betty was doing tv that is just how betty is in real in r- straight up real life that is how she is oh yeah betty 100 is a mean lady but she's sometimes nice um, also, I, forgot and, and I, the I forgot this is this is the first season of the shade tree it was the first and last season when they went they, t- oh, they, didn't, they didn't do the season nine at all but i was like oh my god the shade tree i wish that they kept that i mean i guess you I, you know the mechanics better than because only the eight of you oh there's it's 14 of y'all experienced the, the shade tree so you know how how much access y'all had to but i feel like it does give you a little <laughs> more um uh you know Space to well, I can give like you your, probably your, why your they moment. I can tell you why they probably stopped using the shade tree because, um, so the shade tree was just like a little bit, like maybe like a one minute walk from the sound stage where we um recorded where the, the workroom. And if something like, let's say, uh, me and Derek just fought, one of the producers come by and be like, Hey, Bob, you want to share your thoughts in the shade tree? Like, do you, mm-hmm. but there's no producer in there, it's literally just you by yourself in a room talking to a camera that is all it is there's there's no one to bounce ideas off of there's no one asking asking you questions there's no one prompting you going further to mm-hmm. you think it's just you you walk into a room by yourself you share your thoughts you leave the room you go back to the very big brother they would they would constantly they would constantly but in the big brother like big brother's asking questions they're like big brother wants to know blah 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 
Oh, at least what that's what they, I they see. Have two. This is big, just big, by big, big brother has two. They have oh, they? they have they have the big brother one like, <laughs> like with like the big brother producer. There's also one that like by yourself too. Like you just spout off your your uh, your, your your consciousness. Also, a lot of times we were like when you're on drag race, you're down to the wire with making stuff, with rehearsing, and you don't want to leave rehearsal. You don't want to stop sewing. You don't want to mm -hmm. uh, stop writing. You, to go do the shade room because it takes like maybe like 10 20 minutes to do it um you don't room. want to do that you just want to keep you just want to you just want to keep working on the shade tree um so and and and, and i just think that um I, and i think there's probably a reason why we have producers in hollywood and you normally get better sentiments when you have someone prompting you than when there's someone in there by themselves especially someone who's this is their first time on tv and they've never done anything like this that's just my guess i actually have no clue why they cut the shade tree i'm just just guessing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, we. I think so that you do get some really dope moments. Like you think of real world. I mean, I don't know. We never heard a voice in in, in real world confessionals, but I'm sure they was a producer or I, I don't know. Who knows what the real world did? But sometimes that's when you get those like really raw. Like you know what? Fuck that bitch. I would never come to the show. I fucking hate you. Like you, you, you get all those iconic moments. Maybe, maybe that's what they were hoping for with the shade tree, but they didn't get anything wild like that. Because, like you said, I do agree that drag race does function a little differently. And um, yeah, but you know, who knows. Well, I, I wouldn't say because drag race. Fucking oh. was, I'm just, I just think that it's just, it's just better to, it's just, I don't, it's just better to have someone to bounce ideas off of. So when, you, when you get in a room by yourself and you're just staring at a camera, and you're kind of like, uh, you just don't know what to say. I don't know. It just, it feels hard to figure out what to say, especially when the when the emotions are so raw. Sometimes not everyone's good at sitting in front of a camera and sharing their feelings. Um, <laughs> in rehearsals, uh, Kim Chi and Layla McQueen. When I say these bitches are struggling. When I say these yeah, bitches are not look good. when the, the mm. they are busting the struggle bus, they can and I was it was blowing my mind when I was there because I, I was like I don't know how these girls can't step touch like and I know that not everyone can dance I get it but I wasn't used to working with drag queens who can't step touch I had never worked with a drag queen who couldn't do a step touch and if you don't know a step touch is where you just like it's just, it's just stepping side to side in rhythm left, in left, time with music right. it's literally just that. Yeah. And, and you took it upon yourself to drag Kim. You this this is what you quote: "Kim Chi is the worst dancer in Drag Race history." I said what I said. <laughs> and you just go I said what and I said. Drag Kimberly Chi. Um, I also said that I mean, Kim Chi has two left feet. And I also said Kim Chi has two left vertigo. feet. And vertigo. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. This is also the first you time we got the first Kim Chi fall of the season. This is the first time Kim Chi's fallen all season. The Kim Fall. I mean, now that you think about it, is there anyone, has we seen on Drag Race anyone worse since season eight? And Corey, I can't think of anyone that's been like really, that made them seem like they couldn't dance. I don't know. So you so you agree? Um, no, I'm, honestly, I'm, I, has there been? Season, season nine, no. Season 10, no. Season 11, no. Season twelve, Jackie. Didn't they say Jack? They said Jackie Cox is pretty bad. No, Jacqueline Jackie Cox can dance. Jackie, Co Jackie Cox can dance. She has, she has wasn't, that, rhythm. wasn't that a thing that happened? The challenge, and they were like, "What is going on with Jackie?" I, I don't know, I think they were just saying she danced like a white girl, but she can. But she has like, she, from to my knowledge, I've seen Jackie Cox in the real world, and Jackie Cox has rhythm. It's not great. She's not like doing. She's not Brooklyn Heights or fucking Evie Oddly, but she can. She can dance. Evelyn Oddly. Oh Charlie, Charlie Hyde. Hyde. Oh Charlie Hyde had a, had a season nine. Oh yeah, bitch. Right after Charlie Hyde's. Um, also in the um, in the in what, the other group in, in Chi Chi's group, acid acid. So Jamal starts to um, <laughs> Jamal is helping work in the group, and as it goes, um, Jamal. So so acid is excited that they because as soon as Jamal comes in, they give Jamal like a display of the of the choreo that that they worked on. But because you guys needed more help, like we saw that you guys were like bare bones, didn't come into much, and then their group had like something prepared. And then as it goes, Jamal is now going to use also, the choreo. Wait, wait. That's also not wait. That is also not a true depiction. We had choreography. He just didn't like it. So I just want to be, and, and, and it even showed us we had like little moves and stuff. So I just want to be clear. We did come up with something, but Jamal Sim said, "Nah, this is trash, Mama. This is garbage," <laughs> and then like scrapped all of our choreography. 
So as it goes to, to the camera, to everyone, she's like, Jamal is not going to use a query that I suggested. And like, just being so aggressive that like, if they, if, if Asa did not suggest they do this choreo, that their group would just be shit. And she's just furthering this narrative that like, I am the, I am the Jesus Christ of drag race. I am saving drag race. Um, not calling this Jewish drag queen Jesus Christ. Oh my God, sacrilege. Um, and, but then is also, everyone's really being weird about this. Asmedi is Jewish. Everyone's Word. being so weird about this um, adrenaline shooting up thing. And I'm like, why are y'all acting like we've never made a reference to doing drugs or on Drag Race ever? Y'all are acting, everyone, like, 30's like, why are we doing this? And then even and then Jamal was like, why is that? And 30's like, I, that's what I said. And I was like, why are we acting like this show is on Nickelodeon? Like, what? what, and I what mean, is going on? You know what I will say? This was the switch from your season, uh, next season, the first season, it was on VH1. And I do think that maybe, because even on, I remember on season 10, um, on uh, Ruko Labs, the second episode, when we were doing that dancing act, uh, music theater, no, the dancing challenge, yeah. Um, and there, the, the guy was giving me, he had a caulking gun, and I was holding the, the caulking gun, like, by my crotch. I'm like, nope, you can't do that. There's too much innuendo. I was like... It's a cock. It's like C A U L K. Like they wouldn't let me do that. So I think now draggers are making the switch. And we need to be super conscious of like what we're depicting and like what we're showing on TV. They let you get dirty in that um in that uh old McDonald uh lip sync. Y'all didn't see when Monet fully exposed her anus. I cannot believe they cut that out of <laughs> out of the lip sync. Yeah, scene. like I took the I took the cock ring. I put it on my on my cock and I fucked Shane in the ass. I fucked her right in the ass. And they. <laughs> They cut it out. We better stop talking about uh, <laughs> All Star. <laughs> Before the lawyers knock on your door. <laughs> we all have that one friend who, you know, when you ask them how they're doing, they always say fine. It's kind of the same with my cat. She can seem fine. And since I don't speak cat, I just go with it. I should say, I just uh, pretend to understand what was calling the saying. Well, you know, I wanted a little more peace of mind. And that's why I switched to Pretty Litter, the world's most smartest cat litter. Pretty Litter crystals change color to detect early signs of potential illness like metabolic acidosis, which can cause diabetes, your urinary tract infections, kidney issues, and more. Pretty Litter is ultra absorbent and instantly traps odor. It's lightweight, dust-free, and works up to a month without clumping. That means no more wasting litter. Plus, Pretty Litter ships free to my door in a small, lightweight bag. I never run out. I don't have a massive container of litter taking up space in my closet, and I don't have to lug a bucket container from a store to my car into to my house. Girl, no. Once you try Pretty Litter, it'll be the only litter you ever use. Go to prettylitter.com slash rivalry to save 20% off on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash rivalry to save 20% on your first order. prettylitter.com slash rivalry. These days, travel looks different, but no matter where you need to go, Away offers a range of suitcases and other travel products made of different materials like polycarbonate, aluminum, and durable nylon in a variety of colors and sizes. So whatever you need to bring with you, Away has luggage that will help you make your next trip more seamless. All of Away's suitcases are built to last with durable exteriors that can withstand even the roughest of baggage handlers. Every suitcase comes with an interior organization system that includes a built-in compression pad to help you pack more in and a hidden and removable laundry bag that separates your dirty clothes. Four 360 degree sprinter wheels guarantee the smoothest roll even through the most hectic of airports and stations. A TSA approved combination lock keeps all your belongings safe. There's a 100 day trial on everything Away makes. Take the product out on the road, baby. Live with it, travel with it, even get lost with it for 100 days. If you decided it's not for you, you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund during that period. No ifs, ands, or asterisks. Away offers free shipping and returns on any order within the contentious U.S., Europe, Canada, and Australia. Uh, I gotta say, y'all, to be honest, I love Away. I've been using Away suitcases for years, and I can confidently say, legit, the best suitcases I have ever had in my life. I have pretty much exclusively Away suitcases, and that is true. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcase at awaytravel.com slash rivalry. That's awaytravel.com slash rivalry. 
It's all about confidence when it's time for sex. Am I right, y'all? Sometimes stress, anxiety, or bad day or bad breath can affect your performance and ruin the fun for everybody involved. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five. Girl, how many partners? It's ruining for everybody. BlueChew.com is to the rescue. BlueChew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. BlueChew's tablets help people achieve harder, stronger erections and combat all forms of erectile dysfunction. Because Bluetooth is an online prescription service, there are no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, baby, it's all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers will work with you to find out the right ingredients and strength for your prescription. You don't like swallowing pills? That's not a big deal. Okay, listen, Blue Chew's tablets are chewable. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and they ship direct. So it's cheaper than a pharmacy. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code RIVALRY at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code RIVALRY to receive your first month. Free. Let's get back to season eight. Also, uh-huh. in this episode, bitch, when I tell you Dax is sweating, they're all I mean, sweating though. It, it's like no, it looks like Dax is in a different room than everyone else is in. Like Dax is sweating, like the late great Whitney Houston. Dax is sweating down, but also Dax is nervous. Dax is yeah, Dax a lot cannot. going on. Not. Dex just cannot get his choreography together at all. Also, and I was I was saying I was, I wrote this down this note down earlier. Dax is so fucking pretty. Like in their out of drag, like day to day, Dax is just so pretty. I'm looking at Dax's face. Like, look at this pretty ass motherfucker. I'm like, come on, come on. Yeah, Dex is very Patty. pretty. Dex has De- Dex has great, great, uh, smooth skin. Really great bone features. structure. Yes, Dex is- yeah. Dex is, yeah. Dex is, also, they didn't show this. So we, we had this big group rehearsal. So both groups got together. You notice at the very end of the song. So I don't know if you guys noticed this. Every time there's two groups on Drag Race, ever, in the end, there is a part where they all are, where they are all, to, they come together. It happens every time. But they never show that rehearsal. We always show two. So this is an off-camera rehearsal for the groups to come together. And when we come together, Dax had a part where, where she had to come in and go, cover girl, put the bass in your walk. But Dax could never get that, um, could never get the timing on that. I mean, and I mean, not one. I think the first time Dax uh-huh. got the timing was when we were, was, was during the show. It was wild. Mm-hmm. So like D- when Dax says that she was having a hard time picking up choreo, bitch, she was not kidding. Yeah, and you know, everybody, I, I say this every time I review any type of drag race, everyone cannot do everything. Some people, Dax is a great cosplayer. Dax can make costumes, you know, things, I, bitch, I can't make great costumes. So, you know, that sucks that the second challenge here is something that you're really bad at, which is dancing and choreo. But, you know, I think we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it later when we get to the, when we, talk, when we compare the groups. But to so the bitch, uh, your, your team was what girls? The what girls? The we were there was the lady bitches and the shady bitches. You the, the lady bitches that is that y'all can lean into the comedy more. Like Kim's character could be this like you know it, they, they, there were more there, there there was more space to fall into like Kim Kim not Kim not being a strong dancer she played that into her character and it made her character really funny and it worked out for her. But but the shady bitches they couldn't do that because yeah. they were like the fierce bad bitches. And I want to quickly talk about. Before we get into this performances, I need to make this clear. That was not my wig. <laughs> I did not Girl. bring that wig because, oh, because I, we I were all notes. blonde. Because we were all blonde. And I was like, I don't own a single blonde wig. I don't own any blonde wigs. I mean, I I, I, I didn't bring any blonde wigs. And I wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I think, you go there. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was like, I think through the question my drag, I probably own maybe two or three blonde wigs, but I certainly but I, I rarely, rarely wear them. Um, and if they, they're usually really short wigs. And I had one long blonde wig that I used to, that I would rarely, rare, rarely wear. So I was like, I didn't bring the drag race. And I had to go to the fucking thing and put on one of, one of these fucking wigs. And the entire outfit was from out of the closet. So I just want everyone to know, I did not bring that. I did not bring that outfit. And I did not bring that Girl. wig. 
What about to say my name? I literally wrote, I really wrote, what the fuck are you wearing? This is ridiculous. That wig was crazy. Look at the outfit. Why don't you, why don't you wear pads? Because the, because it wouldn't fit my, because I couldn't get my, the, gar, the, the skirt over my pads. This is the only skirt they had that fit me. First of all, let me make it clear. Y'all realize these are women's clothes. I am much larger than most department stores. If, if I was to shop in a woman's clothes, I whenever I buy my stuff, it'd be a torrid or something really stretchy from another place. So these are not plus size clothes. They had very, very few clothes that fit me. Kim is wearing her own dress and they provided mm-hmm. us with these sweaters. So Kim is wearing a dress that she already brought there. I'm wearing this skirt that they had available and I couldn't get over my pads. I was like, I just got to wear what I got because this, I said, this is what no I got. No corset, no pads. Did you did, did you wear titties? I am wearing titties. It's in the picture. If you look at the picture, I am wearing titties, yes. Girl, I said, but, but, but rewind why, really quick. Why, when why, y'all, aren't, you, why when, aren't you wearing pads on season seven? Why aren't you wearing pads on All-Star 7? Why aren't you wearing because pants, honey, I look bitch? fucking good. I don't need them, honey. Um, I, I wanna, I, I wanna too. rewind a little bit. Uh, I wanna rewind a little bit when you do your makeup. You said my eyebrows aren't even. I will never read another queen on TV ever again. Oh, I wrote that down. I said, and here I am. <laughs> Cut to <laughs> and here I am reading. Cut to <laughs> Cut, so three you, seasons of the best. Able to know you're a fucking liar. You are not a woman of your word, and you just say anything on TV. So just so I wanted to, to bring anyone's attention to that. We, we um, won't even go into Monet's but, absolute uh, barrage of lies, and and I want you all to know God, I that, didn't, um, that I didn't see the picture. <laughs> And I want you all to know that Exploding Footgate is coming. We will get to Monet's lies very, very soon. Wait, before, 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 before we start reviewing the looks. I see the picture of you in this thing. Y'all look, why this shot, Jacob? Before we start reviewing the looks, I want to also talk about how they, 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 they there's a whole discussion about body image. Um, Dax, <sighs> Betty, and Kim have this conversation about Kim. body image. And it's so interesting because while they're getting ready, the, the, so the thing was, Kim... Dax and Betty were on were they but Dax and Betty were on one side and Kim was on the as far as you could be from them on the other side of the mirror, like literally all the way away from each other. And they're trying to talk, mm-hmm. but they're just yelling across the room. But they weren't organically having this conversation, but they're literally yelling. So they're like, Kim, can you please just go over there? So you see a shot of Kim running over with all of her makeup to talk, but it's just Kim crossing the whole room. But she's just standing behind Dax and Betty while doing her makeup and talking about body image. It was just interesting. I remember I remember, I remember them being like, Kim, can you just go over there and talk so you're not yelling across the room? Why um, were y'all all crammed on really... one mirror? No, it was we, like we, seven it, of y'all it, on it, one mirror. No, it was, it was two of them, and then the rest of us came over to join the conversation because we were, we were all spread out. Like, a couple of girls didn't even... Because I don't know if y'all know this. Uh, y'all at home probably don't know this. The mirror on Drag Race is a... It's, not a, it's a two-way mirror. So you can't really, like... When you look in the mirror, it's like there's two of you, and it's not very clear. So most people just do their makeup in their own mirror. A lot of us don't know. On All Stars, the girls know this, but on Drag Race, the girls do not know this. So some of us were in different areas doing our makeup in little corners. We were all very spread out, and they were like, "Can you all get together so you're not yelling, and so that this conversation can be a little bit more organic, so that you're not like, and I so and so." It was really sad when um, when Kim said, uh, "When you're when you're fat, people don't treat you," and then Dax says, "Like a person." And I was like, damn, that is really um, Let me tell you something. And it's also as someone who grew up a fat kid. Yeah, as someone who grew up a fat kid, let me tell you something, okay? You you never ever not feel like the fat kid. I I was a very, very, very heavy child and I identify with everything Kim said and Dax. And um a little uh a little what's 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 Ass's name? J- Jaden? Jalen? Jamin. Little Jamin. I don't know what Ass's brother's name. Um yeah, little Jamin. I did, bitch. When you grow, and any of you listening out there who grow up the fat kid, you know this shit too, bitch. When you grow, you are all you will. I always fight the fat kid forever and ever. Amen. Period. Um, and what and uh, it was, and this also when Cam reveals that she's a, a virgin, of uh, which um, by the way, b- people have been asking Cam if she's a virgin nonstop since our season. That has to be so annoying. That has to be yeah, so. An- another another girl revealed Crystal Versace. Revealed on Drag Race UK three that UK she's 3. a virgin too. Yeah, she yeah, also revealed that, that I'm she's gonna, a virgin. 
I want to reveal to you guys that I am also a virgin. Since drag race. Yeah, you're a version a version of a slut. And then um Chi Chi talks about um being gang related, which was a really yeah, bitch. that was a wild conversation. She said she said when I said uh, a hood, but she said I am from the hood. Oh, the streets. She said one of them. I'm from the hood, though. I mean, I'm really, really, really from the hood, though. Have you um, ever seen a gun in real life? Like from like 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 on the street? Yeah. Uh, no, but I've heard gun. I used to grow up in an area that had gunfire, but I never saw it. No, I've seen a gun not on the streets, never like a person brandishing it. But I have seen guns in people's homes. I've seen guns. Oh, no, I've seen um, on the streets. So. I I did not see that. That is not part of my childhood. <laughs> Um, um, I think I maybe once time saw a guy with a gun. I think I once saw a guy with a gun, like tucked in his pants, but like I wasn't sticking around and hanging out. I mean, I don't know, it was so long ago. But yeah, I just want to let everyone know that I, the only one in the lady bitches who looks good is Kim, and it's because she's the only one wearing her own drag. The the rest I of think, us, I think, I think Derek just looks good too. Clothes. Derek no. was good too. I think Derek looked good. I think I think the short hair worked on Derek. And I, I, I think Derek, Derek looks like Derek looks like a lady. Kim, Derek, and maybe this picture, but Robbie looks good too. Um, Derek, Kim, and Robbie. But Layla, Cynthia, <laughs> Cynthia just be looking crazy. And Layla, Bob, they really did you dirty. It's the no pads for me. Well, okay, if if, if you didn't wear the pads, why why don't you wear your your corset or your cincture? Why not? What's wrong with my body? To give it more shape. What's wrong with my body? What's wrong with the shape of my body? The same thing that you read Simone for on season 13 when we did Watchery. That. That same thing. That's no, what. No, no, no. An- no a- answer the question. What's, what? wrong, what's wrong with the shape of you my body? You have no shape. You have no shape. And what's wrong with people whose bodies are shaped like mine? What's wrong with that? <laughs> they shouldn't be on Drag Race. Oh, yeah. 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 Back down. Back down. Uh, let's go <laughs> to the, back the, down the shady on my bitches. fucking dick. Yeah, back down. Um, the shady bitches look so cool. They look so cool. They, they really look great. Look so cool. And they honestly, look really good. I resent this because like they got better content. They got they got better. They got not only they get better content, but they also just got better outfit choices. And so what you all don't know is this. Whenever you see an acting challenge, you know there's five characters in each acting challenge. Mm-hmm. Every girl mm-hmm. brings each of those outfits. I'm gonna reiterate that. When you see an acting challenge and there's five characters, every girl in the cast has brought every single one of those looks. So when you, you watch your Empire, season. everyone, I, I, I can't speak for other season. Everything I say is for my season. Okay, okay? this. I don't this know if they did on season okay. two. I don't know if they did on yeah, season yeah, yeah. two, three. We did on season nine, 10. 12. or four. But when when whenever there's so when you see the Ruko Empire acting challenge, everyone had a cookie look. Everyone had every single one of those looks. We had everyone had one. So the, the 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 baby character who likes to rap, the one based on um uh Jesse Smollett, every other girl used their looks from that challenge for this. Hmm. So everyone so had like every, a young hip hop star look. Got it. Yeah, they look good. The only one that looks a little honestly looks a little out of it is Acid. Acid looks a little strange, but the, the other four girls look cool. Chi Chi Naomi looks cool. Thorgy looks cool with um with she she's wearing that really cool dreadlock wig. It looks really great. Um, Dax looks great. Chi Chi looks really cool. I Are you being facetious? Dax looks cool. Huh? Are you trying to do a bit? Are you doing a, a bit? bit? No, I love Thorgy's hair. I think well, it looks that's great. Thorgy's... You said a wig. That's not a wig. That's her hair. That really? is Thorgy's hair. Yeah. I can't tell if you're doing a bit. You're doing a bit. Okay, you're doing a bit. Got it. Okay. Go, going on. Um, also, um, I actually like Betty's look. And you, have you noticed that Betty's not wearing any padding? Do you want to comfort Betty not wearing any padding or a corset? Do you have any thoughts? Or is it, or is no, it just for the works. black people? Or is it just for the black people? Hers works. It's just for the black people. Hers works. The, so so oh, now okay, you the white, want to do it. So now you hate Jews. Obviously, your boyfriend is Jewish. This wow. is very awkward. I don't know if y'all want to handle your own thing off, off, off top of this, but I this feels very strange for me. Um, watching both groups I, again. I, I said this. I said this before, but um, lady bitches, y'all like y'all were able to lean into the comedy more. But overall, the shady bitches they were just really they they were fiercer and they had like a few comic bu- comic bits too. And they their overall look was together. And honestly, I thought Dax did a good job. I I thought 
the ja- Jacks. I thought Dax did a good job. I didn't see what the judges were saying about her about her, her critiques. I thought Dax did great. The whole group was great. Drag Layla. I thought that Dax did a good job as well. I thought the group was great. I thought both group. I thought honestly both groups were good. But honestly, the shady bitches just genuinely had much better content to work with. And the whole concept was just better. And we really couldn't. We really did not stand a chance against them in any shape or form. The like reason that. why I didn't think Lady Bitches was just, only because like you and Derek and Cynthia were like nailing the choreo, but the other three, like, and no matter whatever type of Robbie type did of a good job. Robbie, Robbie, was, Robbie was nailing it. Robbie was nailing whatever it. Whatever tried to, I thought Robbie whatever did a really type good of job. T- tight shots they try to do to like only have it on you or whoever, so you only see the good choreo. You could only see like Kim's arm just going a different direction or Layla. Like it, you, you like you could you could you, could, you couldn't cut around it. It was so obvious. Well, Kim, Kim and Layla were the two always fucking up, honestly, because Robbie actually did a pretty good job in this episode. Um, but no, Kim was always mm. fucking up pretty consistently, and they edited her down but but we told her to lean into it so when she would mess up the choreography she would just make a really goofy face right. and just kind of keep going yeah that's what i was gonna say she's like she she made it part of her character so it didn't look bad but but we knew from court from from because we've watched the whole episode we see that we know that she's supposed to do it but her leaning into the her character being ditzy and like fucked up it made it work so kept on the bottom. what do you think of uh the judges looks this is before they used to do the composite images so you can actually see the height differences i think that um RuPaul's she dress looks really looks good. So cute. Yeah, RuPaul looks good. I was oh, I wrote this. I said this is this is when Michelle like between season seven and eight. This is when she came. She was starting to come into her like her own as like 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 what we know Michelle as in terms of like how she dressed on the show now. Because before she was Michelle used to be up there looking crazy with like the craziest chokers and like the crazy hair. Like, Michelle was wild. Now is when she touched she she started to refine it a bit more and it looked, it, um and into what she does now. And Jamal is always fucking sexy. Jamal is so. sexy. Sexy. I fucking love Jamal Sims. Jamal, does he? Is he? Uh, he's just so hot. I love it. Work. Um, let's go to these looks. So, okay, Cynthia Lee Fontaine's dress. You all don't get this in person. It was not good. Somehow on camera, it just translated to a much nicer dress. I remember yeah. in person, we were we were all kind of backstage, like, "What is going?" We were all like. Huh? But then on when I watched it back on camera, I was like, it actually looks like a pretty, pretty, pretty decent dress. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I think on camera it it looks fine. It, it looked like a like a like a green brown pageant dress. She had her hair down. It was it was very it, the category is what evening eleganza, eleganza extravaganza. No, it's red carp red carpet eleganza. Yeah, she looks like yeah. I I, I think it worked for the prompt. I think she looks good. Um, up to yours. I think you look great. I love you. Your body looks really good. Um, I like the hair that you do with it. Only thing I would, because you were just learning how to stone, I think you should have done more stones like dissipate down and also maybe not crystal, maybe do them in a jet or hematite stone. I think it would have been dope. But but that was that was such a, it was it was just different then. To be honest, if I could uh, take, if I can go back, I, w- I would actually take the stones off of it and not do the stones at all and just have it be this lace uh, gown. I have this dress for a long time. It stone. is a very tall dress. What do I, I think if you didn't do stones, it would be like a little too simple. Then I think the stones did add something to it, especially for like red carpet. I think if you if you didn't put if you took the stones off it completely, it would not be as glam. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, you put stones on everything. I I don't believe everything needs stones. I would have taken the stones off of it. Actually, I was just doing it. I honestly put the stones there because I was kind of like. You got to stone stuff. Drag queens put stones on stuff. And I I like stones for some things. And other times it's kind of like, we don't need stones on everything. And obviously I would have probably picked my fro out better than it is picked because this fro is not oh, yeah. picked out, girl. I would have I would have picked raggedy. my fro out. I'm, I'm, I'm known for a much more nice round fro these days. Um, you are? But yeah, I, I, I actually like Looking this dress. Yeah, I do like, I do like really this good. dress. Let's go to Derek Barry. Derek, Derek Barry. is wearing a brown. I do not like Derek in a brown wig. I do not like Derek in a brown wig. I'm not used to seeing that. I think it looks. I think it works on Derek. I think. I think this dress looks fucking great. This looks a very nice dress. It lo- looks like an expensive dress. I think Derek looks really good, and I do like this hair on Derek. I. I, I think Derek looks great, and he has great arms. Great arms. It, Derek works out a lot. Derek works out like every day, basically. Um, on to Layla McQueen. Uh, Layla Ooh. McQueen told us this is the first time she's ever worn a gown in her life. 
Um, and Layla McQueen also Girl, still doesn't know how to style her hair at this point. So she's wearing the wigs. I mean, when I say out of the bag, I mean, she's just taking them out of the bag and putting them right on her head. And yeah. this dress is just eating her. And she barred it from a friend, too. It was it probably was a, yeah and like she she kept on trying to like walk and trying to like show that wooden leg and like try to like show off but it just it just looks it, it looked like it, it looked like a little kid playing in their mom's dress up you know but and the hair well yeah. I, the hair just doesn't work with this you know me I I, I used to love getting a, a anime wig and bitch teasing it into an afro she should just season into an afro uh, and just call it a day but it was down it just didn't work I for still her. don't I still don't know if she to this day has worn wears gowns like she just does not wear gowns very often. And um, yeah. this is just not a great. It's it's not the tea. Um, moving on to uh, okay, so backstage in Untucked, Robbie Turner told us that this was a, and she said it in the runway too. This is a Vera Wang wedding dress that she hand dyed red, <laughs> and that was one of the first times that we all were like, "What?" And she goes, "Yeah, it was white, and I dyed the whole dress red." And we were like, well, that's like three different fabrics. You dyed all those fabrics the exact same shade of red. How did you do that? And she's like, well, and I was like, and the zipper's red. I was like, well, you, I was like, you dye, how did you dye a zipper? Zippers are made of metal. How did you dye the zipper? That is crazy. And she was like, I just, she's like, I just did. And we were like, and I, was, I remember being like, this, and I remember being like, let me see a tag. This is Vera Wang, let me see a tag. And she was like, we took the tag out. And I was like, what is going on? Something, and something's amiss. And this, that being said, she actually looks really good. Yeah, she looks great. She looks Robbie. One of my one of my favorite looks of the night, to be honest. The, the dress is really pretty. The color was really dope. Her hair looks nice. I think I think she looks she looks great. TBH, I think Robbie should have been in the top. I think that Robbie did a great job in the performance. I think she looks really good on the runway, and I think she should have been in the top. And this is when I was she thinking, wasn't a standout this is though. Did you, do you, go ahead. I think so. When she came through with the end of that little deep line, and then she also did the uh, money, 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 but money, but money, money, but money, 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 but money. I thought she was, mm. I she stood out to me. I mean, I watched it today, and I did not remember anything Robbie did, but other people I did. I, 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 I can everything you just said. I, I don't remember seeing any of that. What would you have said if Robbie Turner sat in front of you in that dress and said, "I dyed this red. I hand dyed this red." What would you, how would you react Honestly, to that? I wouldn't even think about everything you just said. I'd be like, I, I'll probably say something like, "You did?" I like you. I like you. You doubt it yourself. And then she'd be like, "Yeah." I'd be like, "Work." And then when she would turn around, I would like look look at all the details in my mind. But I'm like, "No, she didn't." I'm like, "Girl, the zipper's red." And then then I probably <laughs> then I probably find Naomi be like, "Girl, she's a liar." Like, look, the zipper's red too. But she full of shit. Like that probably was what, what I would have done. Um, Kim Chi is wearing this uh, floral, um, this floral sheer dress, and uh, it looks pretty good. It's just so funny. This is just so not Kim's drag anymore. Um, I know, but I, I really, I really love these pieces. On the, I, I always think about. I think about this a lot. These pieces on the shoulder, they're these little strips, and the tips of them are like points, and the entire tip is sewn. I think about that detail all the time. All the time. Yeah, Kim looks really good. And if y'all remember Vanity de Milan on UK3, she did a dress similar. And I think this is what she was going for, or it was in the same neighborhood. Um, uh, so just, if you guys want to check that out. But I think Kim looks great. I mean, I remember I remember when Kim, she went on Drag Race, people were like, oh, this bitch is the fashion queen. People were like, she just has, she is fashion. So, and, and now I'm like watching this season again, I'm remembering like week after week, people were like, oh my God, Kim looks, she, she, Kim is the moment. She's fierce. Like her fashion is like fierce. Like she was like, she was like the first, not the first fashion queen, but coming with like prepared like fashion looks, right? Wow. So you agree no. with Raja. You agree with Violet. Raja shit. No, Raj, you're right. What are you talking about, Raja? Also, fucking Roxy Andrews. Also, also Violet. Also, yeah, there's like so many fashion queens before Manila. There are so many fashion queens before Kim. You're wild. Uh, you know what? Kim was the <coughs> first Manila like Instagram. Um, uh, Kim was the first insta like insta famous person. Like you know, like gay f- Instagram famous girl. That's what it was. Because I, because I followed her. Unlike, unlike, unlike uh, uh, Raj and all these people, I didn't follow him on Instagram. I like follow Kim on Instagram, and I was like, oh my god! So that that's that that's what it was. 
Um, I would say Kim. Up Kim, next. Has, Kim was. Kim, I really do think that Kim has like uh, changed the Instagram game for Drag Race girls. I I firmly believe that Kim. The, we oh, all sure. do Instagram differently because of the way Kim G curated her Instagram during season eight of Drag Race, and that is tea. Uh, her mind. Uh, up next, Chi Chi Devane. Ch- so, okay, was Chi-Chi it Devane. just sequin yeah, or was this... it or was it beaded too? It was just sequin. This this is just a sequin dress. This is a, a sequin tank uh, dress. Okay. Got and it. she and she borrowed it, which is why I didn't. It, it, it was kind of big on her. She's like, it's kind of. She was like, we, I was we were we were in the back like, girl, it is kind of big. She goes, well, girl, I borrowed this, girl. I got to give it back when I go home. And we were like, Work. oh, okay. I mean, it's it's a very plain dress. It it's I, it, it doesn't look super great. It's not bad. I, I like yeah. doing her critiques when um, I think that Michelle gave her some very valid critiques of this dress, actually. And then Lucia mm-hmm. Piani said, I have nothing bad to say about you because Michelle had read her down. And then uh, Chi Chi goes, thank you. <laughs> that was one of, one of my favorite moments. <laughs> I know. Moments. It was great. It was really cute when she did that. Yeah, but this it, it is really simple. And um, yeah, especially compared, especially coming after Kim. She she walked around. After, that's the thing. And Drag Race, you, you can't control your lineup, like how you fall in the lineup. But bitch, if you come after, you come after a bitch that turned it, it's like, bitch, you need to meet her at her level or, you know, or be better. Because then it's like, womp, womp. I mean, I like Kim's dress. I still think that Robbie's dress was better. Like, at, in fact, coming, speaking of my favorite dress of the evening, I don't know, actually. There were some great ones. Naomi Smalls, this is a so sexy. great look this is a this look is very good very very good she, she should bring this back naomi should do it a new a new naomi version of this dress but i love it her fucking legs look super long how she came out the, around the corner and created her own wind and how she and that that hair that color that strawberry blonde hair um and she did she looked great naomi looks so good hot my only wish is that she would have taken off her panties. That's my only wish. If for that little bit of skin, if there was, if, if all we saw between that stri- that that piece in the middle and that train was skin, chef's kiss. It works for me though. The the black panty. I thought it was. I thought it was part of the dress. I I, I think it works. I, I think it looks. It looks great. Let's talk about acid Betty. I love Shoot. this dress. And uh, this was so fucking Esther- good. And Esther was shitting all over it. Like, why is it heavy on the bottom? The color's ugly. Right. And I was like, I was like, Esther, mm-hmm. this is a great, this is a, also, no shade to Esther, but like, I don't know, what was she wearing? <laughs> like, that's pretty, right. Um, yeah. No, Acid Betty looks very good. This is, honestly, I, I, I forgot I saw this, this one. I think this is, this is, I think this is the best look of the night. It was it's so avant garde. Is it, it was so unexpected that sheer part having that having how how to how to how to flares out at the bottom all those details. Her putting that headpiece. I think acid looks. This is my this is top shoot of the night. Whatever the fuck it is, acid looks inc- incredible. She looks so good. I agree. I've also looked up what Esther wore to the to the red carpet premiere. <laughs> of what I looked up what Esther. Wore to the red carpet premiere of Pitch Perfect. Um, Let me see. I, I just, I just, I mean, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll post. I'll hold on, let me, let me uh, send this over to the Facebook group. I mean, she looks, it's, it's fine, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But I just, she was so, she was so harsh on this look. I was like, she must have showed up looking like a million bucks. You know what I mean? Wow, Bob. I just posted First it in years, the, um, not black women. This is, this is getting wild. No, first every international season of Drag Race. Oh right, right. Then Jews. Then Jews. Then black people. Women. Yeah. Got don't it. don't ever for, don't ever forget. Damn. Um, Y'all heard it first. The victim was right. But no, I think I think that Betty looks really fucking. This is a very good look. Every part of this look is great. I love this look. Yeah. It's, and she made this herself. If this came out on, if this, she no, she did not. Did she? Yeah, Betty's Betty can really Betty's very good at sewing. If this came out on Drag Race today, people would lose their minds. People would get die. The only thing I would do maybe differently is like bigger hair. Um, but if this came out on Drag Race now, people would fucking go bananas. This is such a great look. This is so cool. Let's talk about Dax. Um, well, what do you think Girl. of Esther's look at the red carpet premiere? Girl, Wait, not no, a what do you think of Esther's? And, and, what you... Yeah, Esther's in a blazer. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, like bitch, what did you wear? <laughs> 
I was like, you must have been stunting on a hose to cover this look. Anyway, uh, but also maybe just because Esther doesn't know drag and she's like, this is wild. And in drag, we're like, girl, this is everything. Bitch. This is drag, mama. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, okay, Dax's look is, okay, let me talk, let me tell you what's clearly going on here. Dax went and just purchased a dress from the store and then it was way too short. Dax is the tallest person in the cast. Let me make that clear. Dax is the tallest person on this entire and season. And for context, and how that's tall are you? Me, I'm 6'2". Me, Kim, and Naomi are roughly the same height. Roughly. Um, and then and then Acid Betty, me, Kim, Acid Betty, Naomi Smalls, and Thorgy are all roughly the same height. Six Between 6'1 six and 6'3". And and um, Dax is probably 6'4". Six foot four, six, six foot four. So she made a dress that's clearly too short for her. And then she just added some fabric to the bottom, which we found out was added because later on, she just ripped it off during the lip sync. Yeah. Yeah, she looks wild, girl. This is... I, it's also so many different eras uh, with the Dorothy Danger type uh, uh, flower. Girl, no. No, no, no. I, I do say I do love... I love a stretch taffeta. That taffeta looks great. I love the color. It could have been a really cool gown, but no. No, 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 no. I I actually like this this wig on her though. She looks really good in a, in a bang. I will say mm-hmm. she does. She bangs. Why why is it a why I is see- it a Dorothy Dandridge flower? I I thought it was a Billie Holiday. In, uh, That's what I meant, Billie Holiday. Billie I said I said Billie, was Thor, I, oh. I, you're right. I, I meant Billie Holiday. Um, <laughs> I was like, I have seen thing? Thorgy Thor wear this outfit so many times. Thorgy's a good sewer. Right, right. This looks great. I will say though, I mean, I get it. She didn't want she didn't want to wear a gown. I, I mean, I mean, look what Esther wore to 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 a red carpet premiere. So you you obviously can't wear anything. I do I do think that it does feel a little understated though. <laughs> Monet, that, not that re- Monet, that was a read. Monet, that, what? When they said you can obviously when they said look what Esther wore, you can obviously can wear anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like but Thorgy, what Esther wore, like, but you can wear anything. <laughs> Imagine Thorgy's fabric in like a gown. That could have been really cool. But also, she wore a gown last episode. So, yeah. I, I, I guess, uh, yeah. Never mind. She looks good, though. She looks great. Yeah, I think, I think she looks good. I mean, uh, Derek Barry didn't wear a gown, you know? Um, yeah, cocktail dress. I, I think, yeah. I think, she, I think Thorgy looks really good. I, I agree. I, I think the, the wig is a, is a little on the side. It's a little thirsty. Um, but but she does look good, and I and I actually do agree with Esther. Those are some ugly shoes. I agree with Esther, and and, and I own a pair, and they would be uh, they're not ugly with everything, but with this, that is an ugly shoe. I agree with Esther on that. I mean, what else was she gonna wear with it? Unless she got some some um, some shoes and covered them in the same fabric as the gown as the as the outfit. No, I don't. I don't think I don't think or it needed shoe. to be a, a rounded toe uh, platform. I would have preferred actually a. So that came more to a point and that was not a platform, just like a toes on the ground type moment. I thought that would look, look nicer in person. Mm, can't see it. Um, okay, so tops and bottoms. Did, did, did you believe? I mean, did you agree? So they didn't really so they didn't really make Kim's placement clear because she was obviously in the because they made it sound like she was in the top in the critiques. But then they made it sound like she was in the bottom when they started ranking all the girls out because they made yeah. it like it was between her and Layla. So they, I think, I think that Robbie, Acid Betty, and Chi Chi should have been in the top, in my opinion. I disagree. I say I think it should have been um, Acid, Thorgy, and Chi Chi. Okay. Well, we both agree that Ashley should have been in there. And to be honest, it is yeah. uh, my she's my you know, Layla McQueen did not do well and she does not look good on the runway. Um, but also Dax's look is probably I think it's the worst one on the runway, in my opinion. Dax's look is is pretty bad. Yeah. And and I yeah, think that I maybe agree. they were taking that into account. And I I really didn't think I agree that I don't think Dax was that bad in the challenge. I will say this though, on the other hand, I do think everyone else in the group was better than her. I gotta say that everyone else in her group was better than her. 
I mean, yes and no. I'm like, I'm like, that's like you like rating the fucking the um, NBA All Star team. Like, yeah, sure, one person on the team isn't as good as the the quarterback. I don't know even fucking no f- sports terms, but that doesn't mean say, that that person you, is bad. Why did you? Why did you do sports? Why did you say? Why did you even go for sports? <laughs> um, but uh, this is what this is what I'm saying with runways. I think that Asses runway should have that was she was so good to challenge and. In my opinion, the best one of the night, she should have won. Chi Chi was really good, but she she had probably one of the weaker looks of the night. So I Asta should have won this week, for sure. I agree. Asta could, but but Chi Chi was the best in the challenge. Like I do think Chi Chi was the best in the challenge. Like she really killed it, I believe. Um, but yeah. Asta Betty did a good job in the challenge, and but she, but Asta Betty killed it on the runway. So we both agree that Asta should have been in the top. But my question is, if Dax is not in the bottom of Layla, then who is? I think in the bottom, I don't know. I mean, I think I think that's right. I think it should have been Dax and Layla. Layla was bad in the challenge. I agree. And also, and also um, had a, a bad runway. Dax had a horrible runway and was, I don't know, she was good in the challenge. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So they, okay, so let, let me give you a little behind the scenes tea. That's why. I, that's why I'm glad I'm not a fucking judge of drag race. So give you a little behind the scenes tea. So it's actually not behind the scenes. It was in Untucked. So during Untucked, we were like talking to the girls, being like, because we all knew that Layla was going. Everyone knew Layla was going to be in the bottom, including Layla. So I'm like trying mm-hmm. to give Layla some ideas of what she could do during her performance. I'm like, maybe work the fabric, work the dress, do this, do that. But you got to just make it work. And Layla's like, okay, I'm going to try to do that. So she's like, she's practicing these little dance moves backstage. And we were like, our sweet little Layla's been in the bottom two times in a row. First two episodes. God damn, this is rough. Um, and Dax was, I think we were, we were talking Dax up too. And they're like, all right, girl, you know, you got this. This is a great song. And also, not to mention, this is probably the most hype build up to a song there's ever been. It's clips of RuPaul saying, if you're ever going to do a song, this is the song to do. This is like the lip sync mm-hmm. song of all lip sync songs. And to be honest, they're not wrong. Like, mama, yeah. it's this, uh, it's this, um, uh, 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 and I'm telling you, and um, and Last I'm Dance. Yeah, Last Dance you is know, a good one, two too. Of, two of which we had, two of which we had on, on season eight. Two of those songs we had yeah. on season eight of Drag Race. Um, but yeah, th- this was, this song did not get the justice it deserved. And I gotta say, I mean, Layla really, when that dress came off, we were like, it's a wrap, Mary. It's the a shoes, wrap. the it's shoes came wrap. off first. She took them damn shoes off. I said, not the shoes. Get the shoes, baby. Get the shoes yeah, and-, and put them on your feet. <laughs> <laughs> but sweet, our sweet, sweet little Layla took off those shoes and took off the dress and started dancing in her underwear. We said, baby, it's a wrap. <laughs> We were and like, then Dax started twirling that fabric around. I was like, they, this, they, 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 they. It was not good. It was curtains. They were both. They were both very bad. I agree. It would have been abs. Okay, we never thought for a second that it would be a double elimination. We just, we just thought one of the girls was gonna go home. We were like, we don't so know who, who's who gonna be. One. We would have. I don't think either one of them won. I mean, I think that out of if 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 I had to pick one, I probably would have picked Dax because I, because mm. Dax did a like a, I mean maybe maybe this much better than Layla McQueen did, but Not they it. were. I agree. It was this is this was I do agree with you, Paul. This was one of the worst lip syncs, and and when we were there, it was not better there. They they did not edit out <laughs> the good stuff. Let me say it right now. They did not edit out the good stuff. This was not one of those super shady edits that the girls talk about. This was this was what y'all saw was pretty much what happened. And Damn. but when she eliminated both those girls, we gagged. We gagged. We were fucked like up. And then happen. she did that fucking call bit. Literally, and then she did that call bit. So we were thinking to ourselves, well, there's no way she's calling back Nation Lopez. That would be ridiculous. Why would she call back Nation Lopez? She's gonna bring back like Latrice. <laughs> Or like some girl from a previous season, some girl from last season is gonna come back and compete in the like Ginger Minge, someone who like got far last time is gonna come back and compete against us. That's what we thought. And then and then y'all thought Robbie was the most. Y'all thought Robbie had all the information. So y'all like, what you know, bitch? What's up? No, I think by this episode we probably figured out that she wasn't the mole. Maybe around next episode we were hundred percent sure she wasn't the mole. But um, yeah, that, that would this say what? Oh, also another thing is they tried to make it look like uh, Layla just ran off the stage, but that's not actually what happened. What happened was, um, 
they were leaving and then um I Oh, that was the first episode. The first episode when Layla McQueen um, went back to join us, I we, we, I had taken some dollars off of Acid Betty's dress and handed them to Layla McQueen. And then Layla looked back at RuPaul and said, baby, I'm just working for tips at this point, <laughs> which was a real <laughs> kinky. And then Poor. Uh, Layla's little move where she falls to the ground and whips her hair around, we, call it, we, we kept calling it a death splat. So uh, Layla McQueen, on the way out, she actually looked back and she yelled, death splat, and she hit the ground. And then we all kind of had a laugh. But they made it look like Layla just ran off camera. <laughs> well, it, 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 bitch, after that, after that uh, uh, rendition of um, that song, I would run away from camera too, and I would believe it. But, um, you know, poor Layla. Layla is now working on We're Here. Work of, where Layla um, is your makeup artist at some times. And Layla is living a lovely, beautiful life. So good for her. And also Dax is doing their thing, too. Has anyone, also, one of my favorite uh, clips of Layla McQueen, uh, pictures or memes I saw online was, um, if you notice, Layla McQueen is taller than Dax in the in the goodbye where they're holding their Twitter head trophies. Now, bear in mind, Dax is almost an entire foot. Dax is, I think, literally... 10 inches taller than Layla McQueen, or at least nine. Mm-hmm. So what you have to realize that that Layla is just standing on boxes. How Layla many Apple boxes just to get side. on? Like three. I think Layla's on like two Apple boxes. Damn. So someone did a picture years ago where they showed the, the camera shot of Layla and Dak side by side. And then it was a picture of them from the back, a drawn picture. And it was Layla McQueen standing on the boobs for Queen's box. And they were like, how is this bitch the same height as Dax all of a sudden? But they said double elimination, second time in Drag Race. Hurst 3, we sent home two girls, Layla McQueen and Dax, exclamation point. And, um, and here we are, two episodes down, Here girl. we are. Eight to go. Two episodes in season eight, honey. Only eight more. The shortest season in Drag Race Hurst 3. We love to see it. Why do you love to see my season be short? Because you didn't, because you know that less time for you to maybe fumble, more chances for you to do really good and fucking win and be fierce. Okay, because it sounded shady at first. <sighs> Hope me, Lord. Yeah, take a deep breath. Yeah, Lord. get your respiratory system together. Um. Anyway, so we'll see y'all next week for episode three of season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race. We are going back in time, girl. And then you know, if you if you really want to see us do another season that you really want to hear our opinions on, comment below. Let us know what season that is. And we're 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 open. We're open to to to, to watch arise. Ten. <laughs> we're open to Ten. watch arise of what you guys um want us to review. Well, thank you for watching Sibling Retrospective Reef. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Yes, y'all. ma'am. Bye.